Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be talking about the Blackmagic eGPU. So let's get into it. You'll have to excuse me, I do have a little bit of a cold, so I kind of have a little bit of a nasally, deeper voice than normal. But today, I'm talking about the Blackmagic eGPU and how this thing has completely changed my workflow. Now, I say that a lot about a lot of things that I have used, but the reality is I don't invest in things that aren't going to change my workflow in a positive manner. So if you don't know what an eGPU is, it's basically a graphics card or a video card that you can plug in externally. And this has only been you know, viable now since Thunderbolt 3, allowing such fast speeds of transfer that you can actually do this. So most people want eGPUs for games gaming or you know maybe just drive an external monitor 4k monitors or whatever it may be but us as filmmakers we want eGPU for the raw processing and editing power that it allows us in our NLEs now although Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro aren't as optimized DaVinci Resolve is incredibly optimized for using an external GPU so for someone like me I have a MacBook Pro it's a 15 inch i7 16 gigs of RAM and a 2 gigabyte internal graphics card but the problem is when I'm driving my 4k external display and editing massive 4k clips with LUTs and color correction I start to notice my system is completely bogging down. So I jumped on Apple's website and I grabbed the Blackmagic eGPU just as it came out and I thought, all right, here we go. So I've been testing it and I wanted to give you guys some of the results that I've gotten and sort of what do I think of it. So upon taking this thing out of the box, I noticed that this thing is pretty big, it's pretty heavy, but it's super quiet. Now, if you're someone who has a really small desk or a really small space to be, um, this maybe isn't the best graphics card for you. There are smaller ones out there and there are you know ones that you can easily hide, but this thing is super quiet. And for me, who you know does videos like this and I also do a lot of other work here, I don't want something that's like super loud in my ears the whole time. Now, one of the cool features this does have is it also has docking features. It has four USB 3.0 ports, another Thunderbolt 3, and of course your monitor hookups. Now, my gripe about this is Thunderbolt 3 can really only support like 85 to 90 percent of a GPU's full performance power, at least in some cases. So for me, the idea that you're using this eGPU externally and then you're cutting it back by using more things, like maybe then you're plugging in the monitor and then you're plugging in several different accessories in the USB 3.0 port, that's kind of cutting in with the bandwidth. So Personally, this is what I recommend doing. So the way I have it set up is one of my Thunderbolt 3 cables for my MacBook Pro goes to a Belkin dock where my internal graphics card powers my 4K monitor. The two gigabyte card is more than enough to power the 4K display, allowing me to use one of my other Thunderbolt 3 ports to strictly go to the Blackmagic eGPU untouched. Nothing else plugged into it, that's it. And what that allows is for the optimized pure power coming from that eGPU working in DaVinci Resolve. Now again, I'm working in DaVinci Resolve, which is of course incredibly optimized for hardware, but especially its own Blackmagic's eGPU. So one of the things right off the bat that I noticed was playback. On larger projects, 4K, lots of color correction timelines, I started seeing my frame rates drop to about five, six frames per second, which of course on a large project gets really annoying. Timeout. one of the things that I have to say is you have to have DaVinci Resolve Studio in order to use this. Now, it's $300, go buy it, 100% worth it. I made a video on that, check it out in the description below. But again, you have to have the studio version where you can select your eGPU. And one thing that I noticed, which was very strange, is although you may think, well, why don't I use my internal graphics card and my external, I actually noticed that it was slower. So what I'm doing is I'm actually deselecting my internal graphics card, allowing that to strictly worry about the 4K monitor, and then using the Blackmagic Designs eGPU to worry about only DaVinci Resolve and editing. So now playback, is locked at 24 frames per second with LUTs and film grain, all kinds of stuff applied. 24 frames per second, no issues there at all. Maybe if I had a huge project or like maybe in between like a really intense cut, it might drop a couple frames, but that's pretty much it. Otherwise, playback is a million times better. All right, so let's talk about render times. Now I have these written here, so you're gonna see me kind of check out my phone here. Um, so I had a four minute and 49 second 4K timeline. This had color corrections, LUTs, some synced audio, and some graphics. Now the internal graphics cards did it in 21 minutes and 27 seconds. So that's the internal graphics card doing it. That's what it would normally be if you just had the MacBook Pro as is. With the eGPU, it brought it down to seven minutes and 49 seconds. So you're talking about three times as fast when it comes to rendering a fairly big video. So then I wanted to try a short video, something that was only 53 seconds, it was a 4K timeline, but it was scoped, so 239 to 1, and it was scaled, so all the clips were scaled to that 239 to 1, had LUTs, color correction, and some music in there. Um, and the internal graphics card did it in 2 minutes and 9 seconds, and the external graphics card did it in about 52 seconds. So in that scenario, a very short clip, it did it literally a little bit faster than real time, um, 
pretty much giving you a one-to-one. -one. So it's doing it just about in real time, even slightly faster. Um, and it's about two times as fast as the internal graphics card. Now this is a pretty big one. So I did a really hefty test. It was a three minute and 10 second timeline with 13 stack clips with color correction LUTs and film grain. And all of this was scaled to a scope 239 to one 4K timeline. So it's like 4096 by whatever. So the internal graphics card did it in about 48 minutes and the external graphics card did it in about 13 minutes. It was about give or take a second. That's a big difference. Like that's about three times, but when you're talking three times in that, like that's a huge, huge difference. So if you're in the market for an external graphics card, you can imagine that in DaVinci Resolve, it's going to get you about three times the amount of render times if you're coming from the 15 inch. Now the 13 inch obviously is gonna be a lot bigger. But of course, that's a massive jump for using external graphics cards. It really takes some of the more difficult projects and some of the projects that I have a harder time on with bigger clips and all that kind of stuff, and it makes it a thousand times easier. So definitely if you're in the market for the eGPU, I highly recommend the Blackmagic design the eGPU. It is a little more expensive than most. Um, of course you could do, you know, like a build your own that's upgradable, stuff like that. But again, if you're worrying about size and things like that, this is probably not the way to go. But if you're worrying about simplicity, plug and play, this is 100% the way to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys later.